On the shelves of Dijon's city library sits a manuscript written by hand some nine centuries ago. Alongside the Latin text are images of monks, builders, farmers and winemakers. It's another reminder that monasteries and abbeys were once scattered right across the Burgundy region. In the forest of Marmagna, there's one such abbey that stood the test of time since the 12th century, the Abbey of Fontenay. Despite the fact that the monks were driven out during the French Revolution, the building remained miraculously intact. Back then, the site was bought by industrialists. Today, it's a place of peace and tranquility. The sturdy columns of its cloisters stand as guardians against the outside world. The latest guardian of this treasure is Evra de Montgolfier. The abbey has belonged to his illustrious paper-making family for six generations. The abbey was never demolished because it had been converted into a paper mill. You could say that it was this very building which saved Fontenay from destruction in the French Revolution. After the factory closed in 1903, Evra's family invested some of their fortune into restoring the site. Those building works are financed today by visiting tourists. Since 1981, the abbey has been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Visitors have been coming to marvel at the abbey since the 19th century, so we're sort of the curators or the guardians of this heritage. Back at the library, we learn about the existence of another abbey in the region, whose influence once spread all the way from England to Portugal. Its name, Cito. Living peacefully between the towns of Dijon and Bone are the last of the so-called white monks of the Cistercian order. With members aged between 31 and 92, the order is a real melting pot of social and geographic backgrounds. Like their predecessors, the monks spend their time praying, studying or working. So let's go into the part of the monastery that's the farm. For well over a hundred years now, the monks have been reaping the harvest on their 30-acre plot. They have employees and also own a herd of dairy cattle. Every day after morning prayers, they get to work making cheese. It's already starting to change a bit. The cheese is slowly coming together. The whole process is done in silence because the monks consider this work to be like a prayer, something as noble as studying the Bible. One of the particular traits of the Cistercian monks is that they wanted to make it clear to everyone that God made man. And because he made man, he made workers, he made carpenters. So it's normal for us that we should work too. Back in the Middle Ages, the monks at Citeaux planted hundreds of acres of vineyards and set up their cellars, like the famous Clos Vougeau. This winemaker is convinced that it's thanks to those monks that the Burgundy region is now world-renowned for its excellent wines. Any winemaker who's wise must take on board the values of their forefathers. And the monks of Citeaux were most definitely our forefathers. The last leg of our Burgundy journey takes us to the Saône and Loire regions. In the hollow of a small valley lie the ruins of Cluny, the richest and most influential abbey of its time. In 1088, the monks here built the largest church in Christendom. 
You could really wander around this church. It was 187 meters long. It had five naves and two transepts, and there were more than 300 ornamental windows. Thanks to new technology, we now have a better idea of the grandeur of this place, which was almost completely destroyed during the revolution. Part of the former abbey is now home to a group of engineering students. Thanks to this tablet, we have an idea of the facade and the two towers that framed it. In 2013, one of the students developed software which allows us to see and explore the abbey as it was in the 15th century. With the sensors that are in the tablet, you can move around based on what you're looking at. A real time machine that allows us to step back through the centuries and into the sacred corridors of Burgundy's monastic past.